Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Martin, and I'm here with my colleague, Julian Pistorius. We are the co-founders and developers of Exosphere. Exosphere is an open source software project that delivers a user-friendly interface for cloud computing. Um, so if you can imagine OpenStack Horizon being redesigned for researchers and data scientists rather than IT professionals, um, the pitch for users and institutions is that you easily run your workload on big virtual computers. Um, you launch instances, you get a one-click shell and a desktop in your browser. You don't have to worry about virtual networks, security groups, SSH keys, anything like that. Um, so it makes the cloud more accessible. Um, it just works with existing OpenStack clouds. Uh, it's completely a client-side web app, and we strive for very easy adoption and integration. We also strive for no user interface lock-in, which means that if you want to jump between Exosphere, the command line, and the APIs, then Exosphere will get out of your way. Um, if you want to pick it up again, then uh, it, it shows all of your resources that you made using the other interfaces. Um, Exosphere is free, open source, localizable, and white labelable. Uh, we have a deployment for Jetstream 2, which uses their branding and their nomenclature. Um, it's very easy to customize, and you can offer Exosphere to your users today with your own institution's um, branding, et cetera. Um, so we're going to jump right into changes uh, since our last lightning talk in April. Uh, Julian, take it away. Thanks very much. So uh, uh, one of the things that was close to completion last time but didn't, wasn't quite ready was the graphical remote to desktop in the browser. And this is powered by the same uh, open source project that uh, powers the in-browser terminal called Apache Guacamole. And uh, see my clicks on there. It supports copy and paste from the browser and is uh, nice and responsive and doesn't require the way we deploy. It doesn't require any um, uh, extra servers. Uh, everything runs on the instance itself using Docker. My browser is uh, struggling to keep up with these tabs. <laughs> Let's come back to that one. What's our next feature? <laughs> uh, the other one is uh, a uh, new feature called, um, oh, it's based on the uh, DigitalOcean user interface for launching virtual machine images uh, in a nice friendly way. Instead of having to go through a big catalog, uh, a cloud uh, deployer uh, could customize Exosphere using a JSON file. And then uh, instead of having to uh, troll through a whole back catalog, you can have curated images that are very easy to um, select based on the um, distant operating system distribution and version. Yeah. I so guess my, your browser is really struggling. My browser is struggling with the Google go. Meet going. Um, so logo is not loaded. It's half no. loaded. <laughs> well, if uh, I weren't running a Google Meet, uh, you would see some, you would see some yeah. logos here. And the other thing that uh, I spent a bit of time on this last six months uh, was uh, integrating data science workbenches. Uh, this is builds on the binder projects, reproducible execution environment specification. So any binder compatible repository can be launched when you launch a server. Uh, so this, um, then you end up with a persistent uh, Jupyter Notebook or RStudio environment that uh, can run potentially on instances with GPUs, lots of memory, lots of cores. Uh, so it's really good for you know, doing reproducibility and workshops where you don't want to rely on uh, you know, the, the free MyBinder service. Uh, but yeah, everything's standard under the hood. Again, everything, you could do the same thing with the command line tools, uh, repo to Docker. Uh, so I think you know, if you want to see if the... There we go. It's eventually going. There we go. There's an RStudio environment. Yep. So this is, oh, now I launched a billion of them. <laughs> but this is running on the instance that you launched with Exosphere. Um, requires no configuration on the user's part. We facilitate secure uh, TLS encrypted connections from the browser to the instance. And there is uh, 
There's a Jupyter Hub one as well. There we go. You want to see if the remote desktop works this time? Yep. I think my browser has uh, caught up. Graphical desktop with any luck. Oh, I think we'll be lucky. All right. So this is a CentOS 8 instance running GNOME. You can run any graphical application on here. It's in your browser. You can copy and paste between the browser and the host operating system. Um, again, no configuration required on the user's part to set this up. They just launch an instance and say, I want a graphical desktop. Um, finally, I guess, uh, a whole bunch of UI enhancements. Julian, if you want to run through those quickly. Yeah. So yeah, we used to have a sidebar, and that's no longer there. That's my timer. We have a new logo. Um, we have uh, these pretty resource usage graphs, um, just a bunch of tweaks to make the app less intimidating to users, uh, make it look better as well as work better. Uh, hurrying along, um, we have a feature roadmap. Some of the things that we just showed you are uh, actually on the roadmap. <laughs> uh, they're in the works. Um, some GPU-powered features, um, better support for containers as first-class objects, more single sign-on integrations. Uh, we already do OpenID Connect for Jetstream Cloud. Uh, cutting right to the end, uh, Julian, take it away. Call to action. Yeah, um, all of you probably have access to OpenStack Clouds. I would love you to try it. Um, I think what's not in the demo was we have Nectar Cloud working. We have Tombstone Cloud from Cyverse working. Uh, there's a commercial cloud, Fuga, that we got working. And uh, if you, But if you need access uh, to Jetstream, let us know. We can give you demo access to that. And then, yeah, uh, we have a, we have a uh, uh, matrix chat, please, real-time chat where you can talk to us. And... Thanks again for all the help from Daystream and Indiana University uh, for their support, and also a bunch of new contributors that we got from uh, the community in the last six months or so. Uh, yeah, so any questions, feel free to ask them here, chat or afterwards. Thank you.